there, look, see? Those lights do not affect us, but the car is stopping for them. You see that? It thinks that is a 60. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing very well. Today it is the Tuesday that Elon Musk himself has said that the full self-drive beta is coming out to a very select few people. Now sadly I don't have the update as of yet. Uh, I'm still going to be basically checking my car every hour to see if there's a software update but sadly, currently, we are still on 40.4. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is looking at all of the things around the city, all of the things that we come across every single day driving that the system is either not doing now or struggling with. And I'm going to try and go everything, literally try and mention everything that I can see, everything from what I've noticed. Um, and obviously, a lot of it is going to be kind of English roads or British road problems. But let's face it, that's where most of the problems are going to end up. Uh, first and foremost on British roads, obviously, is how tight it is. Uh, look at that. That's bringing up a cyclist as a person, and then he's uh, turned into a cyclist again. That's interesting. Uh, it's started to show people on the sidewalks or on, on the pavements a little bit more. Uh, in the UK as well, we still don't have it, so the car will still stop at this green light up ahead, even though it's a green light. Actually, let's test this. There's no one behind me. Um, and let's just see what the car... I haven't actually just gone to a green light and seen if the car will stop yet or what it will do. So it's not accelerating hard. Okay, now it's dying. Stopping for traffic light control. Is it actually going to stop completely for it? Yeah, okay. So it, it does stop completely for the traffic lights. Uh, and we do have to basically give it a nudge and say, hey, you can keep on going. It's all good. So we're going to go through uh, or around. We're going to stick to mainly main roads here around Hereford. Uh, and then we'll come to the smaller roads later on uh, as we go through. So for roundabouts and stuff, obviously, is issue number one. This is the, the biggest issue uh, in the UK. Roundabouts should be fairly easy, according to Elon Musk, to sort out. The hardest part is actually just judging what the other drivers are going to do on the road. Uh, and that's apparently that's apparently it. I don't fully believe that's how easy it is, especially over here in the UK, where you have roundabouts that you can go over the central mark if you want to. There's roundabouts where there's two roundabouts stuck together, or like in Swindon, I've shown you guys the eight magic roundabout, with roundabouts going the correct way, the wrong way, etc, etc. So you see here, coming up to a little intersection, as, as we get up, the car does slow down quite a lot, so I do accelerate myself forward the natural drive of the car isn't like a human at the moment because it will stop behind a car that's just slowing down and then it takes i know it sounds dumb but it takes about two to five seconds for the car to ignit like notice that the car's not on the road and then accelerate again i've had a lot of people right up my ass and actually some people have tooted think i'm just not making or not concentrating uh, because sometimes it doesn't react fast enough so here on the other side of the road, obviously, as you can see, there's loads of cars parked. Uh, how's the car going to deal with that? Again, it's braking hard for it, and then it continues. And again, that's something where we know as humans that that car was going to cut through, uh, and it, there was no danger. But the car obviously just saw a person, saw something in front of it, and decided to slam on its brakes and brake fairly hard. Again, here, as we come up to another roundabout, I'm going to have to take full control for it. Uh, because it's not doing these roundabouts. I've also heard a lot of people saying things about phantom braking uh, in a negative light where there's a lot of phantom braking. And someone commented the other day that the phantom braking only took two miles per hour off of my speed. Now, I know that is that, that doesn't sound like much, but just trust me, if you're driving a car and the car, even if the regen braking comes on hard and then stops again for no reason, uh, it feels odd for you, but other drivers around also don't don't like it. So again here, as we come up to the roundabout, in my opinion, it's a big gap to leave. It should get a little bit tighter. Stopping for traffic control, which is good, but as we know, it can't do the roundabout, so we will take back control ourselves. And again, this is like a, this is a laned roundabout, so it's got to know how the lanes work on the roundabout. Uh, of course, it's got to indicate and everything correctly. There's a lot, a lot for this update to bring. Okay. I will be very, very happy if this for I know that there's going to be some um, NDAs and stuff for people to sign that probably get the full self-drive beta. I'm hoping someone will show us some cool footage. Again, here I've had to accept going through these lights uh, and you can see that the car's slowing really hard because of that car over there on the left. So I accelerated through myself. But overall, it did that actually pretty nicely. And you can see it clearly sees the red light up ahead and it is going to stop for it for us, which is good as well. 
Now, another issue we do have here in the UK, actually I think everywhere still, is the car won't change lanes. So it won't go over to that right hand lane there, for example. And you can see, look at that, the person walking in the road picked it up. That's really cool. So it showed him, obviously the car knew he was in the road and it was like, hey, let's put him on the screen. So again, use stalk to continue. Kind of annoying, I've got to say. Now let's see, will it pick up that red light of the people on the left as another light? Sometimes it does. No, it didn't today, so that's good. And again, kept us really nicely in our lane. And yeah, so like, I want to go into that right-hand lane and I just I just know it, I know it won't. Um, so I don't, I don't even know if it's worth trying. Actually, let's just try it. Surprise me, car. No, the car didn't surprise me, so I have to do it myself. And again here, another laned roundabout. You see these yellow boxes on the floor here that we have in the UK? That basically means, again, I've still got traffic aware cruise control on, so it's telling me it's gonna stop for all the lights. Uh, but because I'm accelerating through it, it's not, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. But this actually is a problem. Look on the right here, those lights do not affect us, but the car is stopping for them. You see that? It thinks that those lights are for us, which, which they aren't. Uh, and again, that could be very, very dangerous, especially if you weren't paying attention or anything like that. So we've got this car coming, or this lorry coming over. And is it gonna make space for it? Oh, the car in front made the space for it, which is good. My God, there is traffic everywhere. That police car is, I bet you someone's gone out past their quarantine and then the NHS app has given them their details. Um, so again, they're stopping for lights. It does do that little chime that you heard. Oh, what's it gonna do here? This is interesting. Oh, very interesting. So I actually went through those. So I was the last car to go through those lights. You can see there's no one behind me. Uh, and the car saw that they went yellow. It almost thought about slowing down and potentially breaking and stopping, but it continued through it and it actually worked. It actually worked pretty well. However, the thing I see on the comments the most is, how can you say this is close to um, no intervention driving? How is this close to autonomous driving? It seems more stressful than normal driving. It kind of is at the moment, don't get me wrong, it kind of is, it is in beta. So again here, we're coming up to some lights, but they do turn red, so the car stops for them anyway, which is really good. As the lights go green again here, it's still red for us, so I've got to tap down the accelerator to get us going, and then that will start us going off a little bit. I have no idea what lane it's gonna pick here, uh, but I'm kind of intrigued. It's gone, it is going around this, okay? So it went around the lorry, and then it's stopping for these lights. We just wanna go straight on here. Please don't take us right, because that would take us all the way down to... Okay, and again here, there's so many lights. The car, oh, interesting. So he's turning right, I'm going straight. Yeah, you, you, you guys that aren't from the UK, every video that i do i just see comments about how crazy our roads are and obviously for us that for us they're just just normal now but i can totally understand that these roads are a little bit crazy and are a little he hectic especially for our american cousins and i've come here because i want to talk about these speed bumps now i came up to some speed bumps the other day on autopilot and it does not slow down for them so i slowed it down to 15 and as you can see they're pretty big speed bumps if i put that up to 20 the car does do the speed bumps at 20. It's, it just doesn't slow down or doesn't kind of change. Um, so hopefully it's gonna be able to, oh, see these are quite quite big ones. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be able to see the road in front of it and slow down, speed up for obviously speed bumps and stuff like that. But also I want it to be able to dodge potholes and all that good stuff. So this is a good test for it again. A car on the road slightly, just kind of mounting the pavement. Is it going to, oh God, that just feels so close. There was no problem actually, but it did feel very, very close. And I don't know, if you saw that, you've got great eyes. Uh, it actually thought that the note, see that sign up there that says 30, and then it says 20 zone ends. It thinks that is a 60 and it, it it's not. It thinks it's a 60, look at that. It's like, hey, it's definitely a 30 at the top. And it's, look at the, sorry, look at the Ford KA and the cars behind on the road over there. They're absolutely crumpled. Uh, but yeah, so it thinks that that's a 60. So what's it gonna do? Is it gonna let me go 30 or 60? I assume it's gonna go 30 because the 60 is in front of the 30. Yeah, so we're going 30, okay. But there you go, that's it. again another issue uh, that I'm actually noticing a lot. 
been in traffic for quite a bit now, but you can see that it's trying to guess where the stop sign is or the stop light, and that's definitely not it. What it was actually picking up there was the top light on the lorry, two, two lorries in front on the right. There was a red light that it appeared, and uh, when that appeared, it thought that was the red light it was looking for, so it actively changed where it was gonna stop. But as you can see, that was so far away from the place that it needed to stop, that if it did stop there, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been good. So as we come to these green lights, uh, I've put my stalk down to say that it can go through them. Let's see, I kind of want it to stop now. No? Okay. I wanted to see what would happen if the lights turned very quickly. Oh my God, that was dangerous there. Luckily we caught it very quickly and we weren't going slow or fast or it was fine, no one, no one noticed. Uh, but as you saw, it took the green light, which I already thought we had confirmed the car to go through, uh, and it took it as another light it needed confirmation for and started to slow down, but luckily, we're on the point here. Um, and I also, I, a funny thing that I read as well is that you're not in control of the car. Um, you are, the whole point of this is you, you are, and I'm actually talking exactly what I'm doing. I can guarantee you that people in this traffic jam are not looking at what they're doing. They'll be on their phone. Actually, the lady behind me is on her phone. I can literally see her on her phone. Um, and, that, and you're worried about self-driving cars becoming a thing uh, where accidents are so low and you know the cars are so safe and when the drivers like me in the beta program are so vigilant and we're literally watching and I know exactly what the car's gonna do yet for some reason people have a problem thinking that that is more dangerous than um, Karen on a phone just trust me when I say it's it's not there is only one stop sign I know of in Hereford and it is at the end of this road so let's go have a look and see how it reacts to um, to this stop sign shall we here we go, stop it for traffic control in 400 feet and it's showing the stop sign, that's absolutely brilliant. Now last time I came down here, uh, it actually it didn't stop at the correct point, it stopped a little bit early. So I'm intrigued to see, has it changed? Has it put itself further back at all or are we still gonna get the same issues? Let's have a look, shall we? So we can see that there's, there's a 20 sign and the 20 sign, it can clearly see the stop sign as well, but where is it gonna stop? Where, why are we going right? I don't know. Here, this is where it's gonna stop. There's no one behind me, so we're fine. This is where it's gonna stop. And the car can't see anything here. You just, you can't. So, unable to proceed. <laughs> so I'm intrigued to know, again, this update, how is it going to actively resolve some of these situations uh, that are very local, very local to the area? Uh, here as well, we're going right here, so it's like a quick turn. There's a lot for an autonomous car uh, uh, to deal with, obviously, going forth. Now, it's put us back up to 30, but this is definitely a 20. Uh, so it's not actively, it's actively reading the signs, but it's actually not actively keeping to those signs, which I, I find a little bit odd. It seems to be fighting between the GPS and map data of speed signs versus what it sees on the road. We're going on the wrong side of the road here. Um, yeah, completely over to the wrong side of the road. There was no lines, obviously, in the middle of the road, but it shouldn't have gone all the way across. I wanna see how it deals with this as well. So this is just coming to like the end of the road and this also is a pavement. So some people do walk across here and I'm intrigued like that. You saw that that lad was waiting exactly as, as, a, as a person should, uh, but you could see that I got worried. As soon as I saw him, I turned it off. However, I do think the car will have done that correctly. Uh, I'm just not I'm just not doing that yet. I, as soon as I think anything could be dangerous to somebody else, I pretty much stop it. Stopping at the lights here, it won't go until they are fully green and you have to then put the stalk down. Again, that doesn't sound like a big issue, but right now it confuses a lot of drivers and a lot of people are ready to go and you're kind of, oh, just, just waiting or you're not quite the quickest person off the line. And it does cause people to get annoyed. So I try and kind of hurry the car along as much as I can. So here we go, through the first green lights. We've accepted the first green lights. Which lights it gonna ask for next? There's another one, so it's one, two. I need to go in the middle lane here, so it was picking the wrong lane for me. And then straight through here. It did, oh, interesting. I thought it was actually gonna ask me to confirm for that green light again, but it didn't. It's asking for confirmation for these lights, which is fine. Now there is one anomaly coming up that I want to show you guys. So obviously we're going through some lights here. It's pinged me to say, hey, you need to go through them. So accelerate on through them. But as we come down the other side of this hill, sometimes the car thinks that there's a light there that simply isn't there. And I don't know how it thinks this. 
when I did this on my last video, if you want to check it out, on my last video, there was also a phantom light or a phantom stop. And people said that, oh, maybe there used to be a light there. Well, there definitely, definitely never used to be a light there. And I don't know why it stopped where it did, uh, but it, it, it just did. So it is a little bit of an odd one. So I'm actually going to accelerate through it here because I've got a car right behind me. Uh, and I know it's somewhere here. Just watch the screen. Somewhere here. Ah, it's for these school lights. You see these school lights on the left? There. There. Look, see? It does it, but obviously I'm accelerating, so I'm accelerating through it. But just trust me when I say it doesn't always just go straight through it easily. Uh, and sometimes it does like a, it, again, it does a phantom break, uh, which can seem really unnatural and really strange. And then, then it will continue going through. But it's, it's stuff like that, a school light that when that does flash, it flashes orange. So obviously the car is probably going to think it needs to stop for it or at least slow down for it. But you, you don't need to. And again here, you see this sign on the top left? It sometimes think that's a 60 sign. Does it this time? No, didn't think it was a 60 this time, but sometimes it does. It's slowing itself down now, which is really nice for the roundabout. And it's actually, it's actually got really good at slowing down for the roundabout. It doesn't stop for the roundabouts, but it slows down really nicely. Which way? Okay, we're just going to go straight on. I'm kind of lost for where we were going now. Uh, will it pick up this 60 on the left? No, it didn't. Look at that. Still thinks, oh no, it thinks it's a 60 now, but it didn't show the 60 uh, at all. And then this is the final issue, okay? This is the final issue in the UK. Our roads are so, so tight. And sometimes when you're coming down this road, if there's a lorry or a tractor, you have to give way. And is the autonomous car going to know that? In fact, underneath this bridge in a minute, there's some vans sat there, uh, and that would cause massive issues for an autonomous vehicle. You'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, and I have to take control and go around it because the car won't. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think in this beta is, what do you think is gonna be first in this beta? I think in, it's gonna go over lines and it's going, gonna go around people. Oh, here you go, this is what I was talking about. So it's vans like this, like it's, yeah, I'm pulling off because the car just didn't, the car just didn't pull off. It just, it just was going so close to it. And if it's confident to go around it, that's great. I just don't have the confidence in it yet. Again here, this can be a little bit of a wobbly patch for it. Yeah, see, auto steer limited. But if I was going the full 60 there, we had a lot more issues. And again, here for this corner, I'm gonna slow it right down for 30 because it's a tight corner. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this update. I wanna go through and do absolutely everything about the car again. I'm just waiting for that next big update so I can push out tons and tons of videos. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave me a link down below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. Until the beta comes out, drive safe.